so that's why it is called the realized niche now if we talk about the biomes now we have talked biomes before now biomes are uh, just uh, below the biospheres I into the if we look at the organization of ecosystem we find the bobekpo so the biosphere then we have biomes so the biosphere if we divide biosphere in simple divisions which are really organized in small parts they will be called biomes now there is uh, where animals actually live so biomes are actually the habitats for animals so there are different types of biomes present in planet earth then you can find and all these biomes having a similarity so biomes can be the regions in where there are not only the similarity in uh, the environmental situations like the environmental parameters or biotic factor parameters like temperature, uh, moisture, content, water con content and all these things but also uh, it is differing uh, the carrying uh, capacity for different animals and different species so not only the capacity carrying capacity of species but also the presence of different species will vary so if we talk about the biome of a desert the species content of that uh, will be something different uh, than the, uh, then we can find the species in tropical rainforests okay so that was the different so biomes can be terrestrial so normally biomes are being divided into two parts one is the terrestrial which is mean the land uh, biomes and another one is the aquatic which would mean it is a water okay the biomes which consist of a water or water ecological system now it is determined by the geography and also the climate so these two things are really driving force of uh, making a biome or uh, and supporting the life diversity inside a biome are uh, one is the ecos uh, one one is uh, the geography or um, geography of our earth and second thing is the climate into that region so as you can see all of them are differing all of them are differing not in the presence of vegetations but also they are differing on the presence of different animals they are having different types of organisms they they can support in those situations depending upon the climate so if you think about dessert it is really really hot uh, but in if you think about this aquatic biome that it is full of water in this desert it is dry it is full of uh, it is dry hot but in if you see the forest it is humid it is uh, it is uh, it is dark and all this now if you think grasslands it is also some uh, some hot but still it, instead of having these huge plants we are having simple Harps. Okay, so that's why they are differing. And if you think about tundra, it is it is made up. It is just totally covered with uh, ice. So it's really really cold and really really dry in this situation. Okay, so as you can see, the this this different biomes are being differing from different regions. And not only the biomes are differing because of their climate, it also depends on the geographical situations. And as they are differing in geographical situation and climate, uh, they can uh, possess different types of uh, uh, organisms. Okay, they can support different types of organisms. Now, if you look for here, if you look for the aquatic biomes, actually 70% of Earth's surface is water. So we have most aquatic biomes, mostly aquatic biomes. The, all of the most of the biomes are covered with aquatic situations, and uh, actually uh, there are yet uh, many more organisms to be discovered into these aquatic biomes. Okay, so these biomes includes the marine water, which is the salt water, as well as the fresh water. And in these aquatic biomes, what we can see the temperature variations are slight because uh, if they are made up with water so most of the time they are being cold so the temperature variation it is occasionally happening in these situations unlike uh, uh, the terrestrial biomes where the temperature change can be rapid now the factors which are affecting the aquatic biomes are the amount of available oxygen and carbon dioxide and second thing is the temperature third thing is the light which is needed for the photosynthesis because as we know inside these aquatic biomes we have the trees too and these trees are uh, very much uh, the trees also contain uh, those uh, chlorophyll molecules they can also for produce food because these aquatic biomes are totally being uh, just more much more separated from the terrestrial biomes that's why they need to have some producers on their own and they have trees they can produce but they need light for their production they need carbon dioxide for their photosynthesis now there are areas with light it is called a Photic zone, and there are areas wi where is light is uh, where where there is no light is called the photic zone. So photic zone, as the name suggests, it, it presence of photos, presence of light, and we have a photic zone. There are no light. Depending on the presence of photic zone and, and a photic zone, there are different types of organisms that that are present there. 
Now, if you're comprising fresh, uh, fresh water and marine biomes, then you can find this. This marine biomes uh, it provides the most stable aquatic environment of them all. Okay, they absorbs and holds a large quantity of solar heat and stabilizes that atmosphere so that they are, they are playing a very, very important role uh, to maintain the balance between the temperature uh, rising and falling of, the, uh, of our Earth. So it maintains the balance of our Earth's core temperature. Now contain a, rel uh, a relatively constant supply of nutrient material from dissolved salts as you can see because there are lots of organisms are there different type of organisms are there which can live on now serves as a habitat uh, for great number of diverse organisms so they have a lots of biodiversity so in I incredibly we can have more and more biodiversity into those aquatic biomes rather than these uh, other terrestrial biomes okay actually okay so but most of those organisms are yet to be discovered because we can we are we are just uh, to begin at the beginning of the discovery of those marine um, uh, water biodiversity okay now if we think about the freshwater biomes that includes the lakes ponds streams and rivers so these are small ecological systems as you can see these are not as big as oceans so they they are they are not have a major effect on our, uh, our of our system or, or our ecosystem but still it has some effect into the regional purposes so if you think about a pond into an uh, into the rainforest or lake inside a rainforest it will definitely changes uh, the configuration of that rainforest it will definitely changes the relationship of animals and plants into this rainforest rather than others okay now uh, these freshwater biomes are ab having the abiotic factors vary greatly in each so uh, suppose in the in a pond uh, into a particular environment uh, having a particular biodiversity or abiotic factor that if a pond present in uh, inside uh, or suppose if a lake is present inside a rainforest it has a part it, it will have a particular abiotic factor to go on but if this if same kind of lake, lake uh, can be present in uh, open air situations without being present in those uh, uh, or suppose the same lake uh, or a type of lake present in uh, the freshwater lake present in the tund tundra uh, area which are being frozen most of the time of the year uh, will will possess different types of biodiversity definitely will possess different types of biodiversity and and the abiotic factors for them will vary so the presence of these freshwater biomes are having an enormous uh, variety in their abiotic factors as well as the biotic factors okay Spo uh, they, uh, as you can see ponds and small lakes can Feel, uh, fill in and become a land community over time as we can see but if you are destroying this freshwater biomes in turn it will have some effect definitely on the ecosystem of that region because both the biotic and uh, both this terrestrial and uh, uh, this aquatic biomes are playing an important role by interacting with each other because remember as I have told you before that in ecosystem we, we do not cut off any organisms from any so all of these organisms are linked with each other whether they are biotic factors or abiotic factors but all those factors are inter collaborating with each other to make uh, a very good very important or very basic ecological succession system okay so that's why uh, we need to count all these things and the presence of biomes uh, that means the presence of the home or habitat for organisms and uh, it is uh, the area it is not about the address for the habitat but the occupation that uh, that a particular organism do inside uh, these biomes is called their niche so if where they are present and what their occupational uh, status into this particular region will be called of their fundamental reach and a fundamental niche actually and and the region uh, at which they are constricted uh, to do their works uh, instead of doing uh, the work in a whole lot region uh, due to the presence of uh, competition and predation is called the realized niche okay so that's it and I hope that's gonna help you thank you